author of all he can make me, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory.
The title of today's message is Growing Spiritually. Please turn with me to Acts chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. To Acts 6, verses 1 to 8. The text will also be on the screen. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing... The Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you. Men of good reputation, who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of the Jewish priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. As children of God, as disciples of Jesus, each year we should be growing spiritually. Take a moment to think back to the person you were at the beginning of 2017. Have you grown spiritually since then? And as you consider the year ahead, is growing spiritually something that you are thinking about, something that you are trusting the Lord for? Because this is a noble goal. In Colossians 2, verse 6 to 7, we read, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, 
strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. In 2 Peter 3 verse 18, the Apostle Peter, right at the end of his letter, gives us these encouraging words. He says, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So he's exhorting us to continue growing in our knowledge of Jesus. We should never stop growing spiritually. At the end of each year, our love for the Lord should be deeper. Our faith should be stronger, and our lives should look more and more like Jesus. This was the case with Stephen. We don't know too much about him. Nothing is mentioned in Scripture about his personal life, his parents or his siblings or whether he had a wife or children. Nothing's mentioned. But we do know that he was wise that he was full of the Holy Spirit and that he had a good reputation with everyone. The word full is used often to describe Stephen. He was full of faith. He was full of the Holy Spirit. He was full of God's grace. He was full of power. We don't know how Stephen got saved or how he grew spiritually, but we do know that his spiritual growth made him ready for kingdom service. He knew the word of God and he was able to preach with boldness. I believe that when we grow spiritually, we honor the Lord. We honor our Lord when we grow spiritually. Firstly, it shows that we view the spiritual life that he has birthed in us, that spiritual life that he has put inside of us, that we view it as something precious, something to be cherished, something to be nurtured and developed. Secondly, it shows that we have caught his heart, a heart for his kingdom, and that we are no longer living for ourselves. In Colossians 3, verse 2 to 3, we read, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on the spiritual things, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Perhaps this verse is the best one to describe Stephen. His spirituality enabled him to face persecution and even to be martyred for his faith. And he did this with Incredible grace. He did this with incredible forgiveness in his heart and with the light of God's presence on his face. It's quite something when you think about Jesus and how he died, and then you look at Stephen and how he died, and you just can see how Stephen had become more and more and more like the Savior who he loved. So we have a whole year lying ahead of us. I pray that at the end of it, each one of us will have grown spiritually. And that we, like Stephen, will be full of the Holy Spirit. That we'll be full of wisdom, full of grace, full of faith, and full of power. Today, I'd like to share about four places that can help us grow spiritually. And the first place is the secret place. The secret place. I read a quote by Bill Johnson about the secret place, and he writes the following. If you make history with God, God will make history through you. This history is created when no one is watching. It's who we are when we are alone in the secret place. It's seen in the cry of our hearts, how we think, what we pray, and how we value God himself. Our lives are shaped when there is no one able to applaud our sacrifice or efforts. If you think of Jesus, this is the model he gives us. Time in the secret place. It was the nights and the early mornings spent in his Father's presence that shaped him and his ministry. It's very easy to get so task oriented in our pressurized lives. During the day, we can jog through our to-do lists 
And we can end up approaching our time with the Lord in the same way. Verse of the day, check. Prayer, check. And then get back into all the other things that we need to do. But the secret place is a place to linger. It's a relational place where we long to encounter the Lord, where we long to feel His love and hear Him speak to us. The secret place is a place to share our joys and our sorrows. We don't have to pretend with God. It's a safe place, a place of comfort, a place of peace. But the secret place is also a place of guidance and instruction, where we grow spiritually as He teaches us how to live, and He commissions us for service. And these things need time. Psalm 91 teaches us that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The words dwell and abide speak of being settled in a place, residing there, of lingering in a place. I know that for many people, finding a quiet place to spend time with the Lord can be difficult. There can be so many distractions and demands at our home and at our workplaces. But we have to find a time to spend in the secret place. The quality of our souls is dependent on our time with the Lord. Our spiritual growth is dependent on our time with the Lord. The kind of person that we offer to our loved ones, the kind of parents we are, the kind of spouses we are, the kind of children we are to our parents, that is all dependent on time spent in the secret place. I remember reading about a lady with a number of children. Her secret place was on a chair in the kitchen with her apron over her head. And the kids knew not to interrupt her when she was spending time with the Lord. She made a plan. Before I move to my next point, I would like to reread Bill Johnson's quote about the secret place. If you make history with God, God will make history through you. This history is created when no one is watching. It's who we are when we are alone in the secret place. It's seen in the cry of our hearts, how we think, what we pray, and how we value God himself. Our lives are shaped when there is no one able to applaud our sacrifice or efforts. Friends, during this year, let's prioritize time in the secret place where we can come to our Heavenly Father, spending time with Him, ready to receive from His heart. Another place where we grow spiritually is in the body of Christ, the church. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we read, Let us not give up the habit of meeting together, as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more, since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. Now we are the church, not this building. We are the church. Each one of us makes up the body of Christ. And each one of us has a unique role to play. When we embrace this, we grow spiritually. When we recognize our role to play in the body of Christ, we grow spiritually. In Acts 6, we read about the 12 disciples, and they knew what their role was. They knew their responsibility was to pray and to minister God's word. But the church was growing. It must have been an incredible time in the early church. The number of disciples was increasing. And with this came a need to provide food for those who were in need. This was an administrative role. Yet the disciples chose men who were full of wisdom, full of the Holy Spirit, and who had good reputations amongst the people. 
And Stephen and six others began to serve in this role. One of the signs that we are growing spiritually, that we are becoming spiritually mature, is that we are willing to serve in any kind of role, big or small. And Stephen serves faithfully, administering this food distribution program. And then the next thing we see, the next thing we know, God is using him to do great wonders and perform miraculous signs. In a moment, he is catapulted into the role of an evangelist, and he begins to share the good news with the people. If you want to grow spiritually this year, can I suggest that you get involved in the life of the church in some way? Volunteer somewhere. Join the hospitality team. Offer to teach at Kids Church. Maybe connect in with one of our life groups or even start a life group of your own. Who knows, as you start to serve in some small way, some of the gifts that the Lord has put inside of you may come to light. And you, like Stephen, may witness some miraculous things as God works in you and through you. But I'd like to say something about the gathering of believers. We need times like this, times like this, the corporate times of worship and spending time in the Word. The Bible says in Psalm 22 verse 3 that the Lord is holy and He inhabits the praises of His people. There's something that happens in our hearts as we worship together and experience the Lord's presence in our midst. Not to mention spending time in the Word. The Bible tells us that God's Word is alive. And that His Word never returns void. So as we sit Sunday after Sunday and hear God's Word, as we're making notes and pondering and reflecting on what God has spoken, some things begin to change in us and we begin to grow spiritually as God's Word is alive in our hearts. Those verses are found in Hebrews 4 verse 12 and Isaiah 55 verse 11 if you want to meditate on what God's Word does. So we grow spiritually when we come to church with attentive hearts. When I, come, when I counsel people, often I counsel people, and when they are going through difficult times, the one thing I always say to them is, please keep coming to church. No matter how you feel, just come to church. On that Sunday morning, just wake up, just whatever you do, find your way. Because I've seen and I've heard many testimonies of what the Lord does in our hearts, in our midst as we worship together and spend time in His Word. My third point is that we grow spiritually when our eyes are open to the harvest field all around us. In John 4 verse 35, Jesus said, Do not say four months and then the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvests. Is there anyone here who's at school or university? Why don't you just raise your hand? School or university? Okay. There are students around you every single day that are this close to giving their lives to the Lord. They've been disillusioned by what the world has offered them. And that all it might take is the love of God through you and possibly you sharing with them in some way or befriending them. And they too could become believers in the Lord. I would imagine that there's a whole bunch of people here that work in corporates or small businesses that work for government or work in different kinds of industries. And there will be people in your workplaces who need the Lord. And once again, it could just be a kind word from you or possibly an offer to pray for someone who's going through a tough time that could result in a conversation about the Lord. And that, in turn, could result in them to becoming believers in Jesus. Is it our responsibility, you may ask? Yes, it is. We need to live each day of our lives with the great commandment and the great commission stirring in our hearts. The great commandment is a commandment to love, and it's found in Mark 12, verse 30 to 31, where Jesus says, Love the Lord your God, 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Can you think about someone that you work with, someone in your community that you could love, someone that you could be kind to in some way? And the great commission is found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, where Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We've got a life group leader in our church. He's here today. And uh, he's led so many people to the Lord since he was led to the Lord. The other day, he wanted me to do a baptism and then a few days later, he said, no, Bruce, we couldn't wait. We baptized the guy already. And that's how we need to live, looking for opportunities to share the gospel with those around us. 